Former President Jacob Zuma must appear before the State Capture Commission of Inquiry and he has no right to remain silent. The Constitutional Court ruled on the matter this morning following the Commission's application to compel the former President to appear before it. The Apex Court also slated Zuma's disregard for the South African Constitution. Zuma is now mandated to answer all questions posed to him when he appears before the Commission. To discuss, we're joined now by the Director at Duba Bazana attorneys and Tabi Zeng uh, Dubazana. Uh, Mr. Bazana, thank you for being with us. Uh, just, just tell us a little bit more about what this means uh, for the former president. Uh, thank you for having me. So what basically happens now is that firstly, the president, the former president rather, now has to appear before the commission and answer the questions that he has successfully evaded to, to answer for quite some time now. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is that um, the right to remain silent is not something that he can use. And the reason being is that we're not dealing with a court of law here. And even if we were dealing with a court of law, he would not be appearing what the judgment says um, pertaining to that is that he is not appearing before the commission as an accused person. He is appearing as a witness. So witnesses in general, in terms of criminal matters at least, they do not have uh, the right to invoke, the right to, to remain silent. They have to answer questions as they are put to them. Um, and then finally, it would be that also in the judgment, it was said that the, even though the right to remain silent is not present, he now has uh, the right to not give evidence that is self-incriminating, right? Yes. So or of the Commission's Act allows for people to be to, to, to not try and give evidence as a result of it to being incriminating. But the Constitution has said that, we must remember that the, the Constitutional Court rather has said that the Constitution is the highest um, law in the land. So the Bill of Rights has to be upheld. So quoting numerous case law, uh, the presiding officer then said that the right to not give evidence that will be self-incriminating still exists for the president and all other witnesses that yeah. will appear before the court. Yeah, because there is a, a precedent here, right? Uh, Dudu Mieni appeared before the commission, uh, the former SAA chair. And basically to every question or second question, she was saying, I don't want to answer that in case I may incriminate myself. So we may see that pattern if he appears. 100%. So now the, the, the highest court in the land and the highest law of the land has endorsed the fact that if the evidence that's going to be given or rather the answers that are going to be given will result in the in the person giving evidence on that day incriminating themselves, then they will be allowed not to. However, we must remember it's not going to be just, I don't want to answer it because it might be incriminating. The chairperson has to first assess. Um, firstly, you have to invoke the right and say, my answering this question will lead to me incriminating myself and therefore I do not feel I should I should answer the question then the chairperson has to now assess what kind of uh, rights or rather the incriminating evidence that will come out of that statement would be and if the chairperson is satisfied that indeed the evidence coming out of your uh, of your answer could lead to you incriminating such evidence will not be placed on record mm -hmm. however if it happens that the right to to not give in evidence that is that is self-incriminating is not like verbally invoked during the the inquiry. One could say, which is rightfully uh, done, that that evidence cannot be used in a follow-up criminal matter because it was self-incriminating, although it was not raised at the time that the evidence was was yeah. was given. Yeah. Doesn't this undermine the whole sort of changing of, of um, how the commission would work? And, and something that people really welcomed was that the, the evidence that came out could actually be used in criminal investigations a little bit later on. Yes, it does, because um, remember the current president, Jada Ramaphosa, had then uh, made regulations whereby investigations pertaining to evidence coming from the from the commission can now be added into the NPA's investigations. Not exactly per se the word for word of, evi of, of verbal evidence given in the commission can be used, but things like documentary evidence and all sorts of things coming from the commission can be used pertaining to criminal matters. But now if answers and, and perhaps affidavits and all sorts of things cannot, can now be uh, 
invoked under the umbrella of uh, self-incriminating evidence. We are now basically back to where the commission used to be, at least this is my opinion. We are back to be where, uh, where the commission used to be in the beginning, whereby evidence can be given in all sorts of ways, but such evidence cannot be used because now I can say that I will be incriminating myself when I answer this question. Yeah, this is disappointing. I mean, firstly, you can't make someone pitch up and you can't make them speak in, in the first place. Um, so so uh, then you say that the Zonda Commission, uh, the, the Deputy Chief Justice himself can come in and say, no, that's incriminating, it's not incriminating. But we could see a situation like Dudu Mieni again, where he just doesn't want to answer any questions and the South African public get nothing out of it again. Yes. Remember that the, the main purpose of a commission is just to reveal what is the truth behind what happened in terms of uh, general public interest. So it has nothing to do with accountability. That was the main purpose of a commission. It has nothing to do with accountability for actions that have been done. Mm. So now we're at a stage whereby, on top of that being the case, uh, persons now appearing before the commission do still have their rights at the end of the day in terms of the Bill of Rights that protects them from being incriminated in one form or another. We must remember everyone is equal before the law. So just because you are implicated or alleged to be in a situation doesn't mean now your rights fall away. So yeah. their rights also need to be protected, unfortunately or fortunately, depending how you look at it. Okay, but final question then, um, given the claims made against him, if he doesn't give the, the commission much in, in the way of a response, uh, surely it, it can make damaging findings against him based on what other people have then said. Well, when you look at the judgment that has been given today, a lot of lashing out was done to the commission. The, the court, the constitutional court was not very happy with the way it conducted, the, the commission conducted its way of bringing the former president to, to, to the commission. So if he ends up not answering them and invoking all the rights that were also placed in the judgment from today's judgment, that is, then if they make adverse findings against him based on other people's evidence, most of which we can end up saying that if there's no backup took off in, in the sense of documentary evidence, it could be hearsay, then he can take it on review. We must remember that he has an option to take such things on review. But it, I'm not saying it, it, it will not work uh, against him, whereby the findings will be uh, probably be uh, um, horrible against him in such a situation. All right, so we'll wait and see how that sort of pans out at the Zonda Commission. Thank you very much. That was Ntabi Singh, Dubazana Director and Attorneys at Dubazana Attorneys.